So as cases of COVID-19 continue to drop, our, our society is slowly starting to open. Malls are starting to gather crowds. And as restaurants are also trying to open up the economy by catering to more people, how then do we make sure that we're keeping ourselves safe from getting infected with COVID-19? Can monitoring of CO2 in a portable way help mitigate the risk in public spaces for us to be protected against getting COVID-19 infection? Let's watch this. In this tweet by Professor Kimberly Prother, there was a single case of a defected person that led to a hospital outbreak, despite that the maximum number of people in that enclosed space was only four. What happens, the virus stayed in the air for quite some time, infecting many more people. This is a key reminder to everyone that COVID-19 infection is merely caused by an airborne virus, and that wearing your mask, even when you are alone, specifically inside an enclosed space, continues to be advisable. In other words, even if you don't see anyone, especially in public spaces, for example, public bathrooms, removing your mask can be very risky, since these are the places that are often poorly ventilated, filled with aerosolized toilet plumes when toilet lid isn't used properly. In fact, in one recent report by Dr. Ali, bathrooms can deceptively be empty and you thought you're safe, but if someone infected was there before you, it can still be infectious as the airborne virus can remain in the air for quite some time, since again, this is one enclosed space that is poorly ventilated. Seriously, therefore, public bathrooms can be a real risk. So similar to the concept of bathrooms, other enclosed spaces like restaurants, school classrooms, and offices can also therefore be really risky. Why? Because again, one infected person who coughs had a virus airborne that can linger in the air for quite some time. And therefore, simply forget about the outdated six-feet droplet rule. Why? because we have seen huge super spreading outbreaks from aerosols have been documented. And I therefore repeat that COVID-19 is definitely airborne. And therefore, please, when you're in outside spaces, outside of your homes, don't try to remove your mask. We all know that aerosol is different than droplets. Aerosol study indicates that coronavirus is persistent and stable for many hours. We all know that typical air exchange is every 20 minutes to four hours, depending on the ventilation. So if you look closely at this picture, it shows that within 20 minutes, you can still see the typical micro droplet movement around the enclosed space. Meaning, in any enclosed space, ventilation is key. In other words, both proper ventilation and mask are needed to reduce your risk of getting COVID-19 while you are indoors. In this typical example, after four hours without safety measures, irrespective of the safe distance between people, you can see here that if six people spend four hours together talking loudly without wearing a mask in a room with no ventilation, five will become infected. What then should be done to mitigate this risk? Well, first, proper ventilation, Two diagonally opposite openings are therefore ideal if you are in an enclosed space. If you wear a mask, please upgrade to a more premium K95, KF94, or PPF2 mask. And please make sure they fit to cover the chin, the nose, and the sides of your face. One thing that I always use in my enclosed clinic space is to make sure my windows are open, that I have the use of HEPA filters along with ultraviolet light 
to hopefully clean COVID causing virus from the air. But one thing I want to teach you today is about the use of CO2 monitors. For me, this is very useful and it is actually portable. First, we all know that CO2 correlates with the level of aerosols in the air since both are exhaled. Therefore, it also indirectly gives you an idea of the concentration of the virus in the air. But remember, the main source of CO2 indoors is either the flames or the combustion from a gas fire or a cooker or from people exhaling. So if CO2 is building up, you can assume that there are invisible respiratory aerosols in there. So you can actually measure airborne COVID-19 risk by measuring CO2. This important graph tells you that a certain number of CO2 in the environment predicts whether you're at risk of getting an airborne COVID-19 resulting in COVID-19 infection. So if you can see here by measuring CO2, if you have a CO2 of around 800, as long as it's below 800, preferably below 700, then this environment is less risky for you to get COVID-19. So one way to think about inborn CO2 concentration is to consider the rebreathed fraction, meaning for every 400 parts per million above the baseline, 1% of your air is rebreathed from someone else exhaled air. You actually use the CO2 monitor, usually for a short period, simply to check the ventilation in an occupied space and use it to actively manage the ventilation. It is therefore important to remember that CO2 is only a guide. The numbers are not the exact and they don't tell you actual risk from the virus. So what happens? CO2 increases when there are more people in an enclosed space and decreases when ventilation is increased. So the value of the CO2 monitor tells you about ventilation and occupancy. If, for example, CO2 is again less than 800, then ventilation is properly okay. But if the CO2 monitor registers over 1,500 parts per million, then you really should do something about the ventilation. Remember, your air filters in a room can remove virus particles, but these filters will not lower the CO2. So one advantage of actively managing a room with CO2 meter is that you can balance ventilation and temperature and energy. You may find that you only need windows open a small amount to be effective on occasional times, especially in colder weather. As recommended by Professor Noakes, when you choose your monitor, you should always look for an NDIR sensor as they are more reliable. A monitor that can also measure temperature and humidity is likewise useful. So what I would advocate is in the use of these CO2 monitors is that you can easily purchase one that is portable and therefore can easily be brought to places where you plan to dine out with your family or enjoy the location. Remember, the reading in your CO2 monitor gives you an idea of how well ventilated the space is, whether you have to be going out of the place or you can continue enjoying the place because the CO2 monitor registers that the CO2 level is not risky for you to get COVID-19. Remember, a CO2 level that will register in your CO2 monitor of around 400 is similar to that of an open air. So again, any areas where your CO2 monitor will register more than 800, I will definitely avoid this place because it implies high aerosol concentration and therefore will increase my chances of getting COVID-19. I hope this video helps in mitigating your risk of developing COVID-19 infection, especially now that we're trying to open up the economy and more and more people are now going out and enjoying outdoor locations. With that, thank you very much. See you again soon.